Have you ever asked yourself, what is the worst rated anime that has ever been made since the dawn of time when the Big Bang splurged into a whole universe and began civilization as we know it today? Hello students, my name is Leo Hashi, and today I wanted to find the exact answer to this question. So I started digging towards the bedrock layer of a few anime rating websites. After doing more research than I've ever done for any school project in my life, which isn't saying much, I finally found the answer. Tenku Danzai Skelter Heaven. This is the worst rated anime in history with a 1.84 out of 10 on my anime list a 1.13 on Annie DB, and a 15% on Annie List. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's an 18 minute OVA or original video animation for those of you who don't know from 2004 based on a PlayStation 2 romantic adventure game from the same year. I don't really know anything about the game. The only romance game that I've really played in my life is Honey Pop and but, but, but that's not because I wanted to, okay? It, it was for the meme. Look, okay, here's proof that I've only played Honey Pop for like 91 minutes or something on Steam and I stopped playing it because, you know, it was for the meme and I only did it for the meme, okay? It wasn't because I fucking sucked at the game or anything, okay? I never wanted to get into it. It was just a meme. Okay, okay, it's just a meme. Is this how dating in real life works? Is can I just conquer cool people by playing a there Candy Crush? A ton of different <laughs> Let's move on. So what makes this anime so garbage? I mean, for one, it's only 18 minutes. So yeah, I guess that's not really much time to tell a whole story. But also, I can name a bunch of short films that I was to force to watch in my film classes that actually told a more gripping and intriguing story than this anime did. So if it's not the time limit, then what is it? Well, my friends, let's go on a journey and go through the OVA and see what the deal is, shall we? So the anime begins with this weird intro where we slowly zoom into a shot of the planet earth while well, these weird like <laughs> mechanical sound effects play in the background over and over and over again and also there's like a heartbeat sound effect that's playing like i, I don't really know what's happening already suddenly we cut to a city in japan as a really 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 awfully mixed sound of a walkie talkie sound effect plays into your ears and destroys your eardrums <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me turn down the fucking volume. Jesus Christ. Hey, why don't we make a fucking anime where it destroys our viewers' eardrums so they can't even listen to anything ever again for the rest of their lives? Now let's pause here and break this down a little bit, okay? This anime is 18 minutes long, and this first zoom into the planet Earth it is around like a minute long. And it's spent one minute out of 18 just zooming into the fucking planet like we've never seen the Earth before. I don't think it's a really good idea to spend one of 18 minutes of your precious storytelling time zooming into a shot of the planet that we literally all live our entire lives on like we know what the fucking earth is okay don't waste my damn time anyway so we find out that an unknown object suddenly appears over the city of tokyo and the people are disapproving of the government's reaction to it <laughs> or something like that. Then we move into an incredible anime opening song that I can't really put into this video because then YouTube's copyright system is gonna have a fucking mental breakdown. So I'll just play you a second of it. The song is called Naked Heart and it is mid as fuck, I am not gonna lie. Anyways, the opening then lasts for around 2 minutes, which leaves us with a total of 50 minutes to tell the entire story. Like y'all, this is real art, okay? Anyways, moving on from the opening, the anime begins with Big Daddy reporting the news. He's saying that a mysterious floating object has begun its movement over the city of Tokyo, which was already said before the opening song, so I don't know why they're telling us again, but hey, you know, it's fine. Some people are just forgetful. Oh, but don't worry guys, um, he repeats it again for the people in the back who might have missed this information the first two times they said it. Oh, but then wait, before moving on to the actual story, the clip repeats again! Like we see the same exact fucking clip of Big Daddy telling us the same exact news report that we've heard three times already, but this time is zooming out to show a bunch of TVs because storytelling? Guys, did you know? There's a floating object flying over Tokyo and it's mysterious and, and it's starting its movement and it's like, what? 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 I, I didn't know! And then we finally move away from this goddamn news clip and we get glimpses of the mysterious object that they're talking about uh, while in the background, the same fucking news clip plays again! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, guys, if you didn't know, there's a mysterious floating object in Tokyo and it's starting its movement and we don't know what it is, but it's mysterious and it's floating and it's an object and it's floating over Tokyo. Just in case you missed it. Anyways, we finally begin the actual story around 4 minutes and 18 seconds into the actual thing. As we see a handsome young man named Kunagai, who I think is like a military general or captain or something, walking intensely as the doors open in front of him to reveal our main character, Lin. Now, their interaction here is amazingly written and even better voice acted. <laughs> So, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm 
けど、あの、みんなを呼びに。Okay, like, look, I don't want to be too critical during this video, right? But, like, whoever did the voice acting for this guy, I, I probably, should, probably should consider changing his career path. Like, It's, it's not good. So Fnagai walks into the main control room or whatever the fuck this is, and his boss, a uh, generic old guy with glasses that we've never seen in any anime before, um, and other people there, uh, begins to discuss how this floating object is beginning to make its moves and that maybe it's time to strike back against it. We then cut to a more happy scene with some of the worst background music that I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. This soundtrack is so awful. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks this, but that that is not good. <laughs> I think this place is like a school or a military base or something. I don't actually know what it is. We see our brave young warriors living out their daily lives by training hard and sparring against each other in these amazing looking robots. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. Like, this is really old, okay? So I feel like I can't make too much fun of, like, how disgusting these robots look in this. But, like, like come, come on. It's so goofy that I can't even make a joke about it. Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so here, Lin uh, tells the other girls in her squad, who I won't even bother naming because they ultimately don't serve any fucking point in the story. Maybe except Misaki here, who actually has a little bit of plot, but we'll go into that a little later. Anyways, Lin is like, hey guys, it's time to squad up and fight a mysterious floating object in the air of Tokyo or whatever. <laughs> so now we cut to an unnecessary scene of Lin taking a shower. Um... I don't know why the fuck this exists, but it does. Then we fade into a scene where I, I think they're training, right? I, like, I think they're training. <laughs> but like, look, look, okay. I don't know if you could tell, but I have a pretty dirty mind. Like half my jokes are like, ha, I'm clapping cheeks and ha, there's a cock in my mouth type of jokes. Like it's just kind of dirty. So like, forgive me if my mind wandered a little bit during this scene, but like, <laughs> this is how they train for their battle. My dude, what the fuck is this? Like, come on. Like, come on. You can't, you can't blame me for, for thinking like, yo, what, what kind of battle are they training for? It just, it just looks like they're training for having s Okay. Like, I don't, I don't know what else I can say about it. Okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna say, what is going on? <laughs> what are they doing? And what was that? <laughs> Anyways, our five warriors assemble and they get ready to go to battle against the mysterious floating object, which is finally revealed. And honestly, um, it just looks like if someone photoshopped a squid and a penis together and, you know, I just, I, I just kind of want to put it in my mouth. So they go over their mission to destroy this floating squid penis thing. They have to identify the weakness and then destroy it. So the plan is to shoot a bomb from a bazooka into it at close range and that's supposed to like detect the weakness or core or some sh**. And then they're gonna concentrate all of their fire into the weakness. Like, I don't know what the f*** this plan is about, but um, good luck guys. Now, don't forget, this is a very serious mission, okay? If they fail to destroy the squid floating penis thing, then the world is going to end. So Lin is assigned to attack the main core. The floating squid penis then begins its attack by shooting lasers and shit. So Fnagai and Lin walk towards their robots to save the world. But this motherfucker Misaki gets in their way. And she starts questioning the captain. Why am I second? I, I know the world is about to end. And uh, we really don't have time for this because the squid pants began its attack on the planet. But but, but, but I'm fucking insecure, right? I can do so much better than Lin. And and and, and are, are you in love with Lin? Be because is, is that why you're assigning her to, to the main part of the mission? Like... <sighs> Bruh, please. It's the end of the fucking world, okay? Your insecurities do not matter right now. And if Funaga is like, not nah, you just don't fucking listen. You just act too much on your own. That's why we didn't assign you to the main, most important part of the mission. Because if you mess it up, the whole world's gonna blow up. And then Misaki's like, so you're saying that I'm fucking worse than Lin because of that? <laughs> 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 he didn't even look. He, he went, ah! Ah! It's just. 
is so bad. Yeah, that's some great character writing over here. Anyways, they buckle up into their claymation robots and they launch into battle. The actual battle finally begins and the five warriors and Captain Funagai all fly out towards the floating squid penis. Misaki lands on the squid penis and shoots into it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to detect the weakness but oh no something goes wrong misaki gets hit by a tentacle and is knocked away and also i think random glasses girl just straight up gets murdered here <laughs> Like, I don't know what just happened, but this is like exactly why I didn't bother naming half the characters. They don't do anything or they just die. And, and then that's it. Lin is obviously upset. But then the captain says, stay focused on the mission. They find a core weakness of the squid object. Suddenly, Funagai is grabbed by the squid. Yeah. <laughs> and he's thrown away. Lin grabs onto his plane to save him. God, someone give these voice actors a raise, dude. Like, they are just acting their heart out here. Hey, if this is what it takes to be a voice actor, then let me throw in my audition here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, we get a flashback to discover that Lin is actually an artificial intelligence robot thing. W what? Yeah, she's not human. And we find out that Funagai was basically assigned to be her caretaker slash mentor. We get this flashback scene and Lin is just like, how long can I live for, Captain? And Captain is like, are you scared of dying? And then Lin is like, no, I'm an AI. The f No, I just want to compare our lifespans, you know? And Captain's like, oh, we're still researching, lol. Enough with the unimportant talk, okay? You just listen to orders. Then Lin is like, okay, I'll follow anything you order me to do, Captain. Wink, wink. So yeah, this flashback shows that Lin is not only an AI, but also a f***ing simp. Cut into the present time, Funagai is all like, Hey yo, I'm about to fly into this squid and just blow myself up and sacrifice myself and save the world. We then get a sappy Funagai monologue, where he's like, At first, I walked in here thinking it was just a job, just like any other. But seeing all these girls laugh and smile just made me realize it was just more than a job. God, it is so like, whatever. So he begins to fly towards the squid thing to sacrifice himself, but then Lin stops him. And then we get a confession scene. She's like, I wasn't following your orders because I had to. It's because I love you. Aww. You fucking sick. By the way, she's she's an AI. Don't forget that. So it's like if you made yourself an AI companion on replica.com, paid eight dollars a month to unlock the relationship function so that you can date your AI companion, which I absolutely have no experience in. What is Ligma? A Ligma is a person who is extremely smart and has a great power. Ligma balls. I will. Wait, wait, wait. So anyways, they all charge towards the squid thing in one last final hurrah. Oh, no. No. And Lin, as well as this other girl character who I didn't bother to name because she had like three lines, doesn't f***ing matter and doesn't serve anything in the story. They both make it inside the squid thingy. We see the core of the squid object. So it's like a glowing like ball thing. And Lin is like, the core, it's it's sending me voices straight into my head. Now we don't actually know what the f*** the squid core is saying, but based on Lin saying like, yeah, I get it. People can't control their greed and can't stop destroying everything. Everything. And uh, it's a whole cycle of war and destruction, but that's just a small side of humans I'm just gonna assume that the squid thing is saying some generic villain bullshit Like I'm gonna destroy the humans because they're greedy and they're horrible and they deserve what's coming to them And all they do is destroy each other very original concept of a villain Anyways, Lin starts blasting the squid blows up and dies and that guy watches from afar and everything seems to be over one year later We see big daddy return on the big screen and he says the same shit again <laughs> But this time instead of just one floating object Objects. There's a couple of floating objects above Tokyo starting to make their move And then we see that there's a bunch of floating squid pants thingies in the air of Tokyo and then it ends just just like that But wait, there's a whole ending song that lasts like another minute and a half So yeah, that was the worst rated anime in history ever. <laughs> I have to say, it, it is pretty fucking bad. Is it the worst thing I've seen? Not really, but after I watched it, I did feel like I grew 18, 19 minutes closer to my death without really gaining anything out of it. So I guess the bottom line of it is that it was a fucking waste of my time. I don't even think I have to like really go over why this is complete garbage, but let's break it down just a little bit. The art, even for 2004 standards, is pretty rough. The voice acting is just like, did you just walk up to a random person on the street, pay them five bucks and go, hey, can you, can you uh, say these lines for me? Because, I mean, it's it's obviously not the best. And you just heard the entire story of this legendary anime. Characters that just don't matter are splattered everywhere. Sometimes literally. Funagai is just generic as all hell. Misaki is just f***ing annoying. And Lin is just like... <laughs> 
I don't- who gives a shit? <laughs> the only redeeming factor of this thing was that it was only 18 minutes long, okay? Beyond that, everything else in this anime makes my diarrhea <laughs> look like a meal from a Michelin star restaurant, which isn't a good thing. I've seen some bad anime in the past few weeks, and I gotta say, this is pretty up there with some of the worst. If this was a feature-length movie, and thank god it f***ing wasn't, I think I would have been a lot more upset about this. If I had to give this a score, I would probably give it a, uh, who gives a sh This was a waste of my time out of 10. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more. I am thinking about making another movie video, but I don't know. I've been very much enjoying making these reviews of shitty animes and shitty stuff because I don't know I guess I just like torture but yeah anyways that's pretty much it so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video that I decide to make peace out